Hello, my name is Mr. Pendergrass, and I am coming to you from my home here in West Seattle. I am the elementary instrumental music teacher at Fairmount Park School here in Seattle, and this is a trumpet lesson. Today we're going to go over making sure that when we see the pitches on the staff, we not only know their letter name, but which valves to press as well. That's really important. We're going to play through some songs that we know, and we're going to do a duet together, which I think will be great. This is a trumpet lesson, so you're going to need your trumpet and some other supplies, and I'll be back with you in a moment and give you a chance to gather those things. Okay, I am excited to start with you today, but I wanted to give you a word that we can use whenever we practice. This word is called brass, and you can see from the slide I posted up here that each letter in the word brass the same metal that your trumpet is made of, represents a concept that you can use to help you practice without wasting time. B stands for buzz and breath. R stands for repetition and rest. A stands for articulation and agility. S stands for sing it. And the final S stands for share it. Now we're going to do each one of those things in this lesson today. Sometimes I'll tell you what it is, sometimes I won't. But I'm pretty sure you'll be able to figure it out. So the brass method is a way that you can think about practicing so you don't waste any time. Okay, that first B in brass is buzz and breath because we want to get a nice buzz when we eventually put our mouthpiece on our trumpet. So take your mouthpiece and let's do some buzzes. <laughs> I like to time myself and see how long I can go on a really good breath. Then let's do some low buzzes. I point my chin to the floor for low. High buzzes, tight lips. Then between high and low, tight, loose, tight. I call these sirens. Bunch of those. And now let's do a little tune like hot cross buns. We're going to just buzz it. This is my three-part buzzing mouthpiece warm-up. Check out this slide and try some on your own. Before we start playing, I've turned around the other direction because I want to make sure you're holding the trumpet properly. Listen, you hold the trumpet with your left arm and your left hand, not your valve hand. I know you know that, but I just want to make sure this is how I hold it. I put my thumb here, which is probably what you do, and then I put my third finger through this ring here. This can be moved a little bit. You can figure that out if you need it. I'm going to pause the video and then flip around and talk about how my hand presses on the valves. Okay, so now my right hand is pressing on the valves. You don't want to press like this, and I encourage students not to get their pinky tight in there, but you want to rest so you can press those valves straight up and down. If you press sideways, they might get stuck. So, and we sit in our chair like this, too low, too high, just right, ready to play. Okay, let's put our mouthpiece back on our trumpet, and we're going to play a little exercise that has six pitches you should know. Take a look at the screen. You will see the six pitches there, and underneath each pitch is the letter name, C, D, E, F, G, and A, and above the pitch are the valves you press, zero, so you don't actually press any valves for that first pitch, one, three, one and two, one, zero, and then one, two. I just want to make sure you know that C is no valves, okay, zero. And then when you see a one and a three, it means one and three. And one is the one closest to your face, okay? And if you see a one, two, it doesn't mean 12, it means you press valves one and two, right? And these are six pitches you should know. Let's go ahead and go back to the screen and play along. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> Now I'm going to 
to put up the same pitches, but this time we're only going to show you the valve combinations. Let's play the same thing again. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Now look at this slide. I'm going to only show you the pitches with their letter names. Let's see if you can play it. One, two, three, four. Finally, I'm going to show you a version where all you see are the notes on the music staff, the pitches as they should be regularly written. Do the best you can. If you want to think about the pitch names or the valves you press, you can do that. But all you're going to see is the pitches. Here we go. One, two, three, four. A lot of times I see kids write all of the pitch names or all of the valve combinations below every single pitch in a piece of music. That's not going to help you in the long run. You want to be able to see that note and say C, zero valves, or D, one and three, F, first valve, whatever it is. So I want you to take a moment to practice here, and all you're going to see is the pitches on the notation with no letter names or valves written in. So how did you do? Were you able to play those pitches with the right valve combinations without seeing anything above or below the pitch? Take your time to learn them that way. Maybe make up some flashcards or a game. You've got a lot of time now at home to do this, so that's a good thing. So if you've been struggling and writing in everything underneath the pitches, learn them so that when you see them right on the music staff, you know what to play. Let's play a song I'm pretty sure you know from our band book. This is Merrily We Roll Along, also known as Mary Had a Little Lamb. We're going to play this twice because there is a repeat sign at the end. Here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Hopefully you know that song, it's a familiar tune, and it uses five of those pitches we were just trying to make sure we had down. Let's play it one more time. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Now you try playing it by yourself.
Now I really miss playing with students, so I thought we would do a duet today. So this is one that you probably know from your band book. This is Lightly Row Duet. And as you look at the music there on the screen, you'll see there's two parts. There's an A part and a B part. So I'm gonna play the A part first and you can play it along with me if you'd like. Here we go, one, two, three, four. to mention that the last note has that little half circle with the dot in it that's called a fermata that means you hold the note and usually if you have a conductor they'll cut you off let's add one extra beat to it when we play those fermatas again always at the end now I'm gonna put the music back up and this time let's play the B part are you ready that's the lower one one two three four <laughs> part again but this time I want you to play the A part bum, 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 while I play the B part D bum bum all right you're on A I'm on B one two ready go <laughs> switch. I'll play the A part and you play the B part. Are you ready? One, two, ready, go. <laughs> Thank you for playing along with me today. I hope you'll repeat the things we've done in this lesson. You know, I really want you to become an expert at reading the notes on the music staff. So come up with a game, come up with some fun way so when you see those pitches, you can play them. Also, you can play duets with yourself. Record yourself on your mom or dad's cell phone. Make sure you count off first. And then play the other part along with yourself. It's really awesome to play along with yourself. You can do it with the recording equipment, whatever you have. Have some fun. Also, to continue your trumpet education, find out what professional trumpet players sound like. Google top trumpet players. Ask your parents first. And you'll find a lot of really cool videos on YouTube. Watch how they play. Watch how they breathe. Watch how they make a sound. That's probably why you picked the trumpet in the first place, because it's such a cool instrument. So continue that part of your education, especially now that you have a lot of time at home. So keep up the practice, and I hope to see you next time.